In this video we're going to examine the thermal decomposition of copper sulfate pentahydrate. Okay, so here is the problem set out for us. We've got a thermogram for the decomposition of 10 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate and we need to calculate the molecular mass for the leaving groups at each loss and suggest a set of balanced chemical equations to describe the decomposition. So we can see we've got the TGA trace here that goes down in several steps as the copper sulfate pentahydrate loses different groups and we need to work out what's going on here. So first thing to say is that these losses here are cumulative so we need to work out the percentage loss for each step. So loss 1 is 14.4% loss 2 is 14.4% as well because what I'm calculating now is the difference for each step. So if we've gone from 14.4 to 28.4 that's an additional 14.4. The next one is 7.2 because I've gone from 28.8 to 36% and the final one is 32.1%. So that's the difference here between 68.1 and 36. Okay, now to work out the problem we're going to break this down into steps. The first thing we're going to do is work out the formula weight of the compound. So we're going to take these uh, relative atomic masses here just to one decimal place and the formula weight of copper sulfate pentahydrate is the relative atomic mass of the copper plus the relative atomic mass of the sulfur plus four lots of oxygen in the sulfate here and then five lots of 18 to account for the water and that gives us 249.6 grams per mole. The next step is to work out the amount of the compound. Now we know from the previous slide that there's 10 grams and the amount is the mass over the formula weight so we can work that out to be 0 0.04006 moles. Step 3 then is to work out the molecular weight of the leaving groups. So for each loss we're going to assume um, that it's solid 1 decomposes the solid 2 plus a leaving group so that we've just got a simple stoichiometry of 1 to 1 to 1. And that's going to help us as we work things out. So I've set up this table for us. We've got loss 1, 2, 3 and 4. We've got the percentage losses and then we can work out the loss in terms of a number of grams of material lost at each stage. Now given that we've got a 1 to 1 stoichiometry we know that the amount lost for each one is going to be 0 0.04006 moles. That's because that was the original amount of copper sulfate pentahydrate that we had and if everything is in a one-to-one -one stoichiometry which we're assuming for now then that will also mean that each solid that is formed and each leaving group has that amount as well. Now we can work out the molecular weight of each leaving group by taking the mass divided by the amount. So for this first loss if we have 1.44 divided by 0 0.04006 we get 35.9 grams per mole. And we can carry this process on and work out a molecular weight for each leaving group. Now the final step we need to think about this carefully and do a bit of detective work and think about what's going to be lost and what leaving group would give us this molecular weight. So thinking back to the solid material that we've got CuSO4.5H2O the first thing that's going to be lost from that is going to be the water that's going to be the thing that's going to be easiest to take away as we heat up. So if we've got 35.9 this is only approximate so if we round that to 36 that's suggesting that we're going to have two lots of H2O leaving. And again for the second one it's indicative of two lots of H2O going. The third loss indicates that it will be H2O. Now this final loss the copper isn't going to leave it's going to be something else and the combination that fits is SO3. Now it's not actually thermodynamically favourable for it to leave as SO3, it's actually going to leave as SO2 plus a half O2. So now we've got some leaving groups we can move on to step 4 which is to write out a set of balanced chemical equations. So here's our thermal trace. Loss 1 then is we've, we're starting off with CuSO4.5H2O and then we're losing two lots of water as vapour so that will leave us with the solid being CuSO4.3H2O 
and we can just continue this for loss 2. The, the solid material that we're starting with is whatever we ended up with after loss 1. Then we lose two lots of H2O, so we're just left with copper sulfate monohydrates. Then we lose the final water, and then we lose the SO2 and the half O2. So finally we're left with CuO, copper oxide. OK, if we just look at the derivative curve for this for a moment, we can see that loss 4 occurs in two steps. So this suggests the formation of an intermediate, maybe something like CuO.CuSO4. And the final thing I want to just show you is a shortcut method for calculating the molecular weights of the leaving groups. Now what we can do is we can actually just take the percentage loss and take that, take the percentage of the molecular weight of the, the starting compound and that equals 35.9 grams per mole. So instead of having to do all of those steps, it's a bit of a shortcut method. Loss 2 we can do in the same way. Loss 2 was 14.4%, but the important thing here, the key thing is, that we just go back to the original molecular weight of the, the compound that we had to start with, and that gives us 35.9. So the temptation is to take this 249.6 and take away this amount and then use that here. That would be wrong, that would be incorrect. If you're going to use the shortcut method, you have to take the percentage of the original formula weight for the compound that you're dealing with. Loss 3 then, 7.2% of that original formula weight for the copper sulfate pentahydrate gives us 18.0 grams per mole, and then loss 4 gives us the 80.1 grams per mole and that's taking 32.1% of that 249.6 grams per mole. So that's a bit of a shortcut, but do remember that it always has to be the percentage of the original molecular weight. Okay, so that's been a video about the thermal decomposition of copper sulfate pentahydrate.